Now then, a straight red card for a perplexed Raheem Edwards. Laurent Courtois has equally as perplexed as his player. Welcome to Instant Replay for MLS Match Day 5. I'm your host, Andrew Wiebe. As always, we're taking a closer look at the most controversial refereeing decisions in Major League Soccer. We start in Chicago on the banks of Lake Michigan. And if you didn't see the game-winning goal for the fire, well, hit pause and go find that. For those of you sticking with us, the first play is in the second minute. Chase Gasper gets caught by the VAR. Watch closely here. Kokoro gets a touch. Gasper comes through the back of his leg. Yes, that's a penalty. It's also a penalty in the 11th minute. It's Kokoro again, this time baiting Solquist and it coming through his back. Yes, he's clever. He puts on the brakes, but it's on Solquist not to initiate the contact. Penalty. Good decision, in my opinion. So Montreal are up 2 0, and in the 35th minute, I think there was a missed red card on Chris Brady. Kokoro is in behind. He was a menace. Brady comes out of his area, slides to try to win the ball. Gets a little bit of contact, but watch closely. That outstretched arm trailing the goalkeeper stops the ball, in my opinion. For me, that's denial of an obvious goal-scoring opportunity. Kokoro is alone on goal, if not for that handball. And for me, it is a handball because Brady's arm position, outstretched and trailing the body, makes him unnaturally bigger. The laws say defenders take the risk in their arm position. In this case, Brady took the risk. I think he should have been punished with a red card. I also think the Fire's first goal should not have stood. Holly Selassie in the 53rd minute, yes, that is the first half, it's stoppage time, folks, gets in behind and scores. This goal stands, but look down the line. Holly Selassie, in my opinion, is leaning into an offside position. For me, this is clear and obvious. For the crew, it was not, and the goal stood. Last but certainly not least in this match, 81st minute, Raheem Edwards off the ball. Watch closely here. Edwards gets pushed, and he comes back for a little bit of payback. The elbow into the side of the Montreal defender. You can see the AR on that side catches this action. And once there's a stoppage in play, communicates with the referee, and a red card is awarded. For me, that's the correct decision. I've got excessive force when not challenging for the ball. That's violent conduct, folks. To the nation's capital we go, though Messi did not, and Miami still managed to win. That might have been different, however, if not for a call in the first half. 39th minute, set piece for DC. Christian Dahomey in behind, and Sergio Busquets is pull, pull, pulling on the jersey. That is clear as day, folks. We can all see it. A penalty was not called on this play, and it did not go to review. But for me, it should be a penalty. That is a clear foul on Sergio Busquets. But hey, you're asking, Christian Dahomey probably would not have gotten to that ball. I don't think you can say that definitively. To me, it's about a foot and a half, two feet difference as it stands for Dahomey to get there, and that's while being pulled. In my opinion, the benefit ought to go to the attacking player, not the defender in that situation. Defenders should not be rewarded for that kind of cynical play. For me, that's a foul, and it's a penalty. Big controversy in the 71st minute. DC nearly scores before the ball goes the other way, and Luis Suarez puts it in the back of the net. But hold on. Rewind, producer Phil. Watch closely here. Is this a handball? Aviles attempts to clear this ball, and as he goes down, the ball pops up off a deflection from his feet and hits him in the hand. There is no doubt about that contact. The question is, one, whether it's intentional. It is not, in my opinion. Then two, does Aviles make himself unnaturally bigger? For me, the answer is no. The arm is by his side. To me, this is a consequence of his action and behavior within this play and is not a handball. To me, an arm down to the side of his body and not outstretched, that's a natural position. No handball, in my opinion, and the crew agreed. And we got a dog so red so in the 90th minute. Pedro Santos on Borgelin. Yeah, folks, that is a clear red card. All four boxes checked. Distance between the offense and the goal, general direction of the play, likelihood of keeping or gaining control of the ball, location, and number of defenders. There aren't any. Borgelin is headed toward goal, if not for this foul. How would another dog so possibly red so? New York City, Toronto, 42nd minute. Burke Risa pulling down the Toronto player. Now, why is this just a yellow card? I'll tell you why. It doesn't check all four boxes. The Toronto player is not going to keep or regain control of the ball. The goalkeeper is there picking it up when the foul is occurring. Therefore, it's just a yellow card. One more, a red card from this game. 66th minute, Keaton Parks. Oh, yeah, serious foul play to find there, folks. That's a tackle that endangers the safety or uses excessive force. Check and check. 
Let's go to Nashville. 83rd minute. Should Shaq Moore have been penalized on this play with Nashville up 2-1? I say yes. Ajimon has control of this ball in the 18-yard box. And for me, it's not a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder challenge. Look where Shaq Moore makes contact. Right on the numbers of Ajimon. For me, this is a foul and should have been a penalty kick. It was not called on the field. Hey, you uh, want to see a handball? 10th minute, Seattle, Colorado. Keegan Rosenberry getting his arm up and extended as the cross comes in. Yep, that's a handball and a penalty. And this is a second yellow card on Josh Atencio in the 56th minute. Now, folks, is this in any doubt? No, it's a reckless challenge. It is a yellow card offense, and Atencio was on a yellow. Therefore, he's off. What I would have liked to see from the referee is for him to blow his whistle immediately upon the challenge, knowing that Atencio is already sitting on a yellow card. Do not let advantage be played in this situation. Send Atencio off. That's not how it went down. And it's not how it went down in the Columbus Red Bulls game in the 95th minute, second half stoppage time. Daniel Edelman in a similar situation. He's on a yellow. He commits a yellow card offense. I think that's pretty clear. And the referee plays advantage. Why? The crew are up 3-0. If this is an ejection, blow your whistle, stop play, and make the call. In both cases, the end result I agree with. I would have liked to see the process be just a little bit different. Let's clean up three more plays here. Austin, Philadelphia, 10th minute. Alex Ring, the handball call that Austin fans didn't like. Well, watch closely. You can clearly see the ball hit the hand. It's outstretched. That's an unnatural position in my opinion. And yes, this angle tells you he's inside the 18. Now, was Daniel Gazdog offside in the 65th minute on Philly's equalizing goal? Well, sort of. Gazdog is in offside position, but does he commit an offside offense? No, not in my opinion. How is that possible, you say? Well, Gazdog has to interfere with an opponent in this situation. He's got a challenge for the ball. He's got to prevent someone from being able to play the ball or obstruct a line of vision. He has to make an obvious action that impacts the ability of these defenders to play the ball. For me, Gazdog doesn't do that. Therefore, it's not an offside offense. And last but not least, another dog. So Martin Caceres is going to be looking down the line at Maya Yoshida and saying, come on, commit the foul just a little earlier in the play. And Yoshida apologized, by the way. But this, again, is dog. So the St. Louis player is headed toward goal. He's going to keep the ball, and he's going to have an opportunity to shoot, if not for being fouled. Adios, Martin. And that's it for us. Big thanks to my producers, Phil Ivanko and Rich Hernandez. I'm Andrew Wiebe. We'll see you next time.